In this session of the video, we're going to look at topics four and five together, the vanity niche and wall elevation and dimensions. I'm going to cover that both in this single video. The process is going to be enclosing our vanity with the niche, placing our accessories around it with the lights and a mirror, moving on to the ceiling, placing our soffit and our electrical above that. The inspiration for the design was provided from the client with this photo. You'll notice the ceiling has the soffits with an opening in between, the lights that hang down, and then enclosing the vanity is a niche. So let's go into our program and take a look. Using the soffit tool in the plan view side, let's just click and place our soffit. Let's highlight that and double click on it. And let's go ahead and change the height of it to be 9 inches the depth of it to be 24 inches and then the floor to bottom should be more like 98 and 5 eighths. Could easily snap that up in our plant and our elevation view as well. Once I've made those changes I'm going to make that my default using the set as default tool in the lower section of your screen all future soffits now will carry on those attributes. Let's pull that soffit to the end of the room using the copy and reflect about tool. We'll make a copy around the other room, the other side of the room. Again a soffit and we'll place it in the edge. Snap that to the other edge. Copy, reflect about the room. And now we've got our basic soffits to surround the room and I'm going to grab this soffit, create a copy of it since it already has the right end-to-end -end dimensions. Let's go ahead and open it up and I'm going to change the depth of that one. Let's go ahead and change the depth of it to be 9 inches and we'll reduce the height by 5 inches making it 4 and then we'll also add 5 inches to the floor to bottom. Select OK and I'm going to copy that every 36 inches. And we'll just slide a series of copies down here. And let's go ahead and shift click on each one of those. And we'll center in the room. And I've got those five soffits. Again, you can see those in your elevation view. Next, we want to create our ceiling lighting, and you can see that in the photo the client's provided here, um, we've got some of the cross soffit that may be a joist in that photo, but I want to get a light pretty similar to that, and I've saved one in my library. Let's open up the library and place those, and then we'll create a series of copies of those. Again, I've in my user catalog, I have a folder called the Parabola Bath that I saved my favorite items into that helped me remember. Here's my light. So we'll just grab that light and I'm going to come over here and place that light in our plan view. Let's wheel in. Let's rotate it and use the center tool. and now I've got that centered. All I have to do now is the multiple copy using the same 36 inch interval that we set before and now I've got those lights exactly set in there. Let's close our library, take our 3D camera view and take a peek inside the room with those soffits and the lights set up. And you'll notice that I've got a red indicator turned on. That's because I have my light sources being displayed. I could turn that off but I like to set that layer on so I know exactly where that light is going to be uh, coming out. Now that we have our ceiling and our cross soffits and electrical in, let's take a look at creating the niche around the sink. You can see in the rendering the niche that we want to create. I'm going to use the custom backsplash tool to create that. Then I'll place a mirror in our pendant lights Let's close that. I'm going to do most of my work here in the elevation view. And the first thing I want to do is add dimensions on here. 
Let's go ahead and click that. You'll notice that along the top it's pretty messy. And I think what I'm going to do is let's go into our plan view here and let's assign all of those cross soffits. I'm just going to draw a marquee around those soffits, select them, double click to open them, and I'm going to change the layer on those. I've created a special name called the cross soffit members. Select OK. Let's go back into our wall elevation. Let's turn that layer off and that will clean up our view quite a bit. So now when I refresh those NKBA dimensions, let's just zoom out here just a little bit, draw a marquee around all of the dimensions, and we'll refresh those dimensions. It's a much cleaner look. So you might think about that as you're doing your design work if you want to create uh, different layers that may be similar like we did in the soffits. With the Backsplash tool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here roughly and draw a backsplash that goes floor to ceiling. It looks like I missed that, so let's just go ahead and draw that backsplash. Once it's drawn, I'm going to use my dimension. When I highlight the dimension, there's a series of diamonds. There's an extra diamond at the bottom. So I'm going to just pull that up here, and we're going to click to each side. What I want to do is let's go ahead and pull that dimension. I want that to be about six inches off the edge of the wall. You'll notice as I'm dragging that out, sometimes it's snapping in full increments, sometimes it's not. If you want to set that, you can go in here and set your snap grid in increments to one inch and then it will adjust accordingly. So let's go ahead and set these dimensions here. With the backsplash highlighted, I'll click on that dimension, use six inches, use the fourplex move tool. So now that it's six inches off the wall, and I want that to be exactly eight inches. So that's the first component of the niche. Using the copy and reflect about, just choose that, reflect it around the sink, and then we'll draw one more backsplash, snap it in here. And as I'm pulling it down, I'm just going to press the tab key and make that exactly 8 inches so I don't have to type in another dimension. Now I do need to open that up and make the change to the thickness. Set that to be 8 inches. Select OK. And I did forget to do that on the other two, so let's make that same change. Pull that over here and we'll set that to be 8 inches. So they're 8 inches in thickness. They're 8 inches in depth. To create the mirror, I'm going to use the polyline solid, and we'll just come in here and drag out the area that we want for the mirror. Let's highlight this and set the dimension of the mirror to be 32, and then we'll set the top height to be 42. And then using the center tool, we'll center that on the cabinet. And let's just pull that up here just a little bit. Let's grab our dimension tool here. First of all, I don't want that dimension on the bottom shelf. Using the extra diamond, let's go ahead and pull it up here and pull an extra diamond up here. So now I have that exactly dimensioned. And let's go ahead and add one more dimension if we zoom in here a little bit. Let's add one for the uh, custom countertop that we had. And we'll set one here as well. So with that mirror selected, I want that to be, let's say, six inches off the top of the countertop. So it's selected. I'm just going to come in here and put in a value of six. And I can position that exactly. Might be a little tight to the. Uh, so I'm going to add another half inch to that. Let's make it six and a half inches. And pull that up just a little bit. Oops. 6.5. It's important to click that dimension there. And that probably adjusted the height of our mirror when we made that change earlier. So let's just pull that down and set that to be 42 inches. So I've got the mirror in place. In the library, let's apply mirroring materials. I've got that material shortcut here. I'm just going to grab that 
and then when we take a 3D view you'll be able to see reflections by applying mirror material to that otherwise it's just a polyline solid which in my case my default material was concrete. Let's clean up some of the dimensions here on the bottom. I don't want this extra dimension here so you can see it's picked up one of our legs in one case and I want to go ahead and add the dimensions again you can simply come in here and use that extra diamond and pull dimensions on or off like I've done there. Back into the library let's add our pendant lights and again if you want to do your search in the catalog let's take a look here we have them in our core catalog and our bonus catalog in fact you'll find some additional bathroom lighting in that catalog and find some interesting ones as well as the core li library. I saved a favorite one in my custom library down here so let me grab that particular light and we'll go ahead and place that in the design. And what I want to do, let's add a dimension in here. I want to position that light accurately before I make a copy of it. So I've got my annotation sets and in Chief Architect Premier you'll find annotation sets. These under our defaults are a collection of defaults. So in an annotation set I can set defaults for my CAD, my dimensions, text. So anytime I make a change to an annotation set it's changing in this case about eight different other defaults that I have. If you're using the interiors version you can come in and make those same changes but you have to do it to each one of these. So I have my appliance line centers set up and if I modify this let's go ahead and edit this to locate electrical because right now my appliances and fixtures are only marked. I want to also pick up electrical and I can also get to that just by double clicking on this tool right here and that will bring out that same dialog and I can make that change. But I wanted to give you a little bit more information if you're using Chief Architect Premier you can go into your dimension defaults and make that same change. So using the center line dimension tool here let's draw a center line just through the middle of our plan and I probably wasn't high enough on that. Let's do that one more time and just make sure that I made that change to include electrical. Okay, so let's use our centerline tool and uh, draw our centerline through here. And let's pick up that electrical component. And for whatever reason I missed the fixture, so let's pull that in. And what I want to do is highlight the light and I want to set that to be 24 inches from the center of our faucet. Now these extensions you can modify if you want to pull them down into the plan you can do that whatever your preference is. I'm going to take that light and I'm going to create a copy of it around the center of the sink and that light is now there. Again if I want to copy grab one of those let's pull that dimension over here and let's grab that extension line and we'll just pull it down so that it's even with that. If I have my crosshairs on, oops, sorry. If I have my crosshairs on, you can see that a little easier in lining it up. It's under the edit, under preferences. Turn that on. And now when I highlight those items, I can pull it in and make it exactly align up with my other centerline dimension. A lot of times I turn those crosshairs off for videos, but I always have them on for design work. Now we can do the exact same thing on the other vanity but that's a lot of steps so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back over around our components from the other sink that we just designed. I'm going to hold my control key down and highlight each of the elements and now I'm going to use the copy tool and reflect that around the center of the door and place those items on the other side and then we'll come in here and clean up our dimensions here a little bit, a little bit tedious so I'll pause the video and go ahead and uh, finish that up. So I'm just about done wrapping up the dimension cleanup. 
Again, if you want particular dimensions that you don't want, just grab the diamond and pull them off. Now here's another thing that I sometimes will do. In this wall elevation, we have two soffits that are going the opposite way of the elevation. And I like to use the cross box just to kind of indicate that there is something going the other direction. So I'll just draw a cross box on top of the uh, soffit so that it shows up and it's very clear what's happening. Now the last thing that we're going to do for our room is I want a tile wainscot to come up above the mirror slightly and go all the way around the room. And the easiest way to do that, let's go back into our floor plan. So you see a rendering of the wainscot here and it's it's going up and around the in the entire room. In the plan view, all I'm going to do is select inside the room. Let me get my deselection tool off. Select inside the room. And I'm actually going to use that as a wall covering. And I've already used a flooring material. Let's go ahead and find that color gray EM3. That's a Dell Tile product. Select OK for that tile. And then I'm going to go ahead and define the height of it at 51 inches and then set the floor to bottom at zero. And then when you take a 3D view, you can see, grab that camera here, you can see how quickly it is to just put that wainscoting in there. Now I could have used the, yeah, and you can also see our reflections moving around as well. I should turn off those light sources here. So I'm just going to shift click on each one of those lights and I'll show you where that setting is here on the light data. If you just turn off show the light in position, then that will turn that layer off. It looks like I missed that bottom one. I like to show the light sometimes in the render views just so I know where the light's coming out when I get ready to ray trace render. So here's the, uh, the wall covering. We've got our niches surrounded and uh, the design starting to come together. Now let's go back into the library and let's apply a little bit of color onto the soffit here. And I'm going to use a Benjamin Moore color that I saved off and I'm just going to come in here and apply that to the different objects. And I'm going to get most of them that you can see in the view. And so that's the way we can add a little bit of color into the uh, into the design. So here's a completed view of what some of the work we've done so far. This is the ray trace render. I'm going to get into that when we talk about the rendering and 3D models. So make sure you uh, come back for, for that video segment as well. In the next video segment, we're going to talk about creating our tub platform and then create a wraparound bench that goes into the shower.